So, my first question is, uh, I want to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. When did jazz become a part of your life? Um, I would have to say consciously when I was about 14. When saw, uh, a friend of mine named Larry Henderson told me about John Coltrane. I mean, before then I was, it was called soul music. That's all I listened to, because that's all what was on the radio. Okay. James Brown, you know. Yeah. Well, by 1980, you were already playing with guys like Chet Baker and Sonny Stinn, Dexter Gordon. Those are some heavy guys to start out with, start your you know your sort of jazz career with. You talk about your approach in those gigs with Sonny and playing with Dexter Gordon and Chet Baker. How does a young kid approach playing with those heavyweights? Okay, well, growing up in Chicago, um, I started out playing R&B, so I had experience, some experience. It, and uh, I played with Sonny Stinn when I was 16. Um, Back, I had just started really getting into jazz, so I was still playing electric bass. And um, he needed a band in uh, Robbins, Illinois. That's where uh, Dwayne Wade is from. <laughs> and um, so we, the band I played with, we backed him up. And he played on some of the music that we did, and we played some of his uh, original music. And um, so I had experience before I moved to New York playing with Von Freeman and a lot of the local jazz musicians in Chicago who didn't go to New York, so they were more like the um, teachers of the younger musicians. So we had like a cushion to um, get educated from the older musicians in Chicago. Von Freeman, um, uh, so there's some other guys not very well known, like singers who didn't go to New York. So. I learned a lot from them before I moved to New York. And so I came to New York with Wynton Marsalis. You know, the week that I was here, um, John Byrne, it was a club called The Lush Light. Um, Charlie Hayden canceled, John Byrne couldn't do it, so that's how I got to play that night with um, Chuck Baker. So, and in New York, one thing leads to another. That's how it works here. Yeah. What about, uh, so from 83 to 86, just a couple of years later, you're with Art Blakey. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that experience like, and is there any particular stories you can tell about playing with Art? Everybody sort of has a story well, that they like to tell. Some stories you can't talk about. <laughs> 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 Those kind of behind closed door stories. But I mean, but I mean um, it, it, it's, it's like um, everything you could imagine about um, being in New York, I mean, in a positive way. Like, I mean, he looked, Art Blakey treated you, it was no level. Like, you know, you on this level or a higher level. Because I, I the, the first year I played with him, I went to Europe, and then um, that same summer, um, he, he used me on an all-star gig. I wasn't no all-star, you know, I was, just got the gig. I was 22 years old, and uh, we were the all-star band consisted of Benny Golson, Curtis Fuller, and um, I mean uh, Terrence Blanchard. You know, went to Marcellus, but you know, I'm talk to me the all-star is like Benny Golson and Curtis Fuller. You know, I mean, you know, so that's and we did a live recording and a lot of TV shows. That was in Japan. So for, for me, that was like, you know, I'm part of this situation, you know. So he, like I said, he treated you like just one of the guys, you know. It was no level. And who's uh, who's in those bands going through? If you remember a couple names from '83 to '86, who are the, who are some of the guys? You can't forget nobody name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bo Grimmiller, uh, Donald Harrison, John Tucson, Terrence Blanchard, and uh, Johnny O'Neill played. Before Mugger. Yeah, I was just telling you about it. Piano, Johnny <laughs> O'Neill. 
Cool, yeah. that's great. Well, you went from one great drummer to another. You went from Art to Jack DeJanet. And that's a whole totally different thing. They're both great in their own way, but that's a totally different thing. Can you talk a little about that? It, it's, it's different, but it's almost the same, because they both have the same spirit. And they, um, J Jack is more of a contemporary. You know, but it's... it's um, um, my career was going in dire that direction or what, to play with someone like Jack. Because, I mean, Art Blake is more traditional. But he still played more loose, and Jack played real loose, you know. And um, in between, I, I I did a CD with um, Dizzy Gillespie, played on one. His CD's called New Faces with um, Bradford, Marcellus, and Kenny Kirkland. And I did stuff with David Murray, um, a recording with him. And it's in New York, you know, you get calls from everybody. Yeah, playing with Jack must have been interesting also because, I mean, you know, he's not going to just hold it down for you, you know what I mean? You really got to be your own uh, yeah, ears yeah. and your own voice. Well, no, none of those guys, New York is, is like finishing school. In Chicago, the guys give you a chance to, you know, like, you know, work through some things. But, I mean, um, in New York, it's like, you know, you have to be ready. You know, so it's, 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 it's not... He's not going to say, well, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to catch up. And I have a new CD coming out, actually, this month. What's that CD called? Ancestral Devotion. Ancestral Devotion. And what's, what's, is there a concept behind that one also? Um, I, I try to like, you know, the concept's more like what's going on in my path in life. And so the West Side Story was took me back to my youth, you know, like when I first heard music. And ancestral devotion is more away from the music, just learning about, as a as an African American, learning about the history of my ancestors in Africa, the stuff that we never was taught. So it's more of, like, I put it this way, when I played R&B music, I didn't know about jazz. But when I started learning about jazz, it gave me more knowledge to play all kind of music. So the ancestral devotion is learning about African civilization. See, we're not taught this. This is like when I learned about this when I was a kid, and to me, this is one of the most important things you should learn. Like when they say, "Teach the kid," now you got to teach the parents first, and then they teach the kids. So it's more of education of an African person in America, the lack of education that I got from the school system because they didn't teach me about who, I, who my ancestors were. So when you tap into that energy, then you can get more information about as far as um, bettering yourself. So that's what that CD, that's what it means, ancestral devotion. Mm -hmm. Like, the same way we devote ourselves to anything that's going to help us, educate us. And to me, that's one of the most important things of an a, a African-American person, because that was cut off from us. So that's what it's about. Hmm. Uh, and what are you playing tonight? Who, who's in the band tonight, and what do you guys expect uh, to play? Helen Song, Kenny Grohowski, Jeff Hermanson, and Mike McGinnis. We're going to play music from... Um, my um, last couple of CDs. We're going to uh, play, attempt to play Ancestral Devotion. The drummer wasn't here for the sound check, so we're still going to take a chance. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate it, Lonnie. Okay. Oh, thank you.